This episode of Moist Meter brought to you by Godslap. Issue 3 is out right now at godslapbook.com. You can find links below in the description. Go check it out. Initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Jedi Survivor. I'm sure you've all seen the headlines about how awful the game is due to performance problems. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to factor that into our advanced scientific calculations when rating this game because it would be ridiculous to overlook a $70 game shipping in the state that this one has. It's poorly optimized across all platforms, but most notably, it's horrendous on PC. Like 99% of people's computers can't run this game consistently at 60 frames, which is just an unforgivable sin. $70 for a game that doesn't even meet the baseline standard of AAA quality that you'd expect is laughable. Which is an absolute shame because the game itself is good, but I absolutely have to mention how awful the performance is because most people aren't even going to be able to enjoy the game. You're watching a slideshow sometimes, it's got so many problems, and I don't want to hear any of that mumbo-jumbo about how, well, Charles, don't you know they're planning on fixing the game and patching it right now? Old St. Nicholas at EA's got all his little elves, all his little helpers working on it tirelessly to fix the game for the gamers out there because they care. I say that's a goddamn load of dirty barnacles. This trend of push it out now, fix it later is garbage. I fucking hate it. And anyone who has that take of like, oh, it's so entitled to expect a game to work when you pay $70 for it, I'd say that take isn't worth a doggone set of donuts. So like, It's a bunch of baloney. The game, when you buy it, should work. It should be functional. It should be in a good state. That shouldn't be a hot take. So yes, the worst part of Jedi Survivor is the performance. Everything you've read is accurate for the majority of people who are going to be playing the game. I got lucky enough where my problems on PC were pretty minor. They were not game-breaking, but I recognize I got lucky. That's not going to be every player's experience, at least not until patches roll out. So I would say definitely wait on the game no matter what. But let me get into the game itself, because like I said, it's good. Now, Jedi Fallen Order, I liked a lot. I was blown away by how much I enjoyed the combat in particular, but it had flaws. It had a lot of jankiness to it. It was a bit wonky at times. Unfortunately, with Jedi Survivor, I feel like they didn't really polish that jankiness to it. Like, there's some hitboxes that still just go Insano style. Like, they just have a mind of their fucking own. It's There's a ghost in the machine, and that ghost wants to fuck you in the ass, because sometimes these hitboxes make... No sense. It was a problem that existed in Fallen Order, and it's still here in Jedi Survivor. There's also a huge emphasis on just fighting a lot of local wildlife, which are the biggest culprits of the worst hitboxes in the game. So sometimes it begins to get to become a bit of a headache, but the gameplay itself is still really fun. It's not like a drastic improvement over Jedi Fallen Order, but I do recognize some quality of life improvements, and I really did enjoy it a lot. There's a lot of stances to go between. You have your standard single saber. You've got your double-ended saber. You've got dual wielding. Uh, I don't want to spoil too many other ones because I don't know how much has been revealed in trailers and stuff, but there's also two other wacky ones that are really fun. One of them, I will say one of them, I don't know if this is a minor spoiler, but be warned. There's a blaster stance where you get to use a lightsaber and a blaster, and that's the one that I kind of just mained for the entire game, and it never stopped being fun. There's a lot of versatility to the combat. The skill trees are pretty expansive, but unfortunately, a lot of the skills I found to be really worthless. Like, they don't do a whole lot. I played this on Jedi Grandmaster difficulty, so maybe that's it because everything's pretty spongy, but a lot of the abilities in the skill tree, the Force ones, they just weren't super useful. The animations are really long, so they lock you down for a while, so you just end up getting punished when you try and use them against a boss fight, or, God forbid, if you you know, take a fucking stupid pill and try and use them in a horde of enemies, you just get blasted. It's just a lot of the force abilities didn't have a huge purpose for my playthrough, so I didn't find myself using them a lot. And I'm talking about force abilities for the saber stances. The other force abilities like force push, force pull, you know, lift, slam, all of those, those were always useful and a lot of fun to toy around and experiment with. You could cheese a lot of things with a force pull if you upgraded it. 
But uh, overall, I don't have any major complaints about the combat other than, of course, some jankiness and the feeling that they didn't really take a huge step forward with their combat from Jedi Fallen Order. Though I guess they didn't need to because it was just so much fun in the last one too. So, I enjoyed it, but don't expect anything crazy from it if you played Jedi Fallen Order. You're getting a lot of what you're used to, which for a lot of people, like me, is fine. Now, luckily this game is a long game, so you're going to have plenty of time to have fun with the combat and toy around with finding some optimal strategies that suit your playstyle. It, it took me a long time going through it. I did a lot of the side content. I killed pretty much every legendary boss, and that's like a minor complaint I have. There's only two legendary bosses that aren't just recolors of normal enemies with a name. It, and that's Ogdo and the Rancor. Everything else is literally just the normal enemies that you encounter, but this time they have a name like Ugmog or something. But it's the exact same moveset, the exact same everything, they just have a name now. And their health bar isn't even that much bigger. So the legendary enemies, while a cool concept was pretty underwhelming past Ogdo and the Rancor. And fuck Ogdo and fuck Spawn of Ogdo. I killed both of them. I even did the double Ogdo fight where you fight Spawn and Ogdo together. I fucking triumphed on Jedi Grandmaster difficulty. Probably the only one in the world that did it. So I'm a real champion out there. Uh, point is though, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of time to play around the combat. Though I do think the legendary bosses had a lot more potential than was realized here. And outside of that, the game's just massive. There's a whole lot to explore. I did a lot of exploring. There's challenges that you can do, like parkour challenges for skill points, as well as just upgrades. It's just a huge game. I was blown away by, like, the size of the worlds, like, and how much there was to do of it in there. There wasn't a ton of worlds to visit, which I think for a lot of people might be disappointing, but the worlds that you do get to visit are massive, with a lot to them. A lot of puzzles, a lot of parkour, the parkour is fun, the puzzles are fun, although the puzzles aren't exactly brain busters, the parkour always makes it enjoyable and it's super smooth. There's also a lot of wacky, zany characters in this game that even offer fun little mini games. like there's a whole hollow tactics mini game, which is a little strategy game within the game where you fight units against other uh, NPCs, and the units that you can use for your squad are units that you scanned in the main game. So you'll kill uh, a Rancor, for example, you'll scan it, and then you can use it in the game. Although I don't think you can use the Rancor, so bad example. But you kill enemies, you scan them, then you get their card to use in that mini game, which is cool. There's also a gardening mini game, which is cool. There's just a lot to do. I was really surprised by just how much depth there was. There's a lot of meat on the bones of this game. Now let's get to the narrative. I've been putting that off because I have such mixed feelings on it. I really like Jedi Fallen Order's story. I had a great time with the narrative. I thought they built up something special. In Jedi Survivor, I felt the same way. I actually thought they did a great job with the story. I was drawn in immediately. I really think a lot of the characters they introduce here, as well as like the big bad, was very cool and compelling. And I don't know if this is a spoiler, so just in case, another minor spoiler warning. It deals with the High Republic, and I always think that's such a cool setting to explore and a cool time period to explore for Star Wars, so the High Republic plays a crucial role in the narrative. However, this is where my feelings get mixed. The game really loses its footing in the final act, and not even the final act, really like the final 10%. It's really just right towards the end. They had great narrative beats throughout. I really thought they were fucking hitting a great stride. I was a little underwhelmed that the Empire was kind of absent for a lot of it. You were mainly dealing with Raiders, but that's not a huge complaint. I thought overall they were doing a great job with the story right up until the end. It seemed like they had a great idea, and the idea itself for what happens at the end is great, but the motivation behind it and exactly why things are happening the way they are gets very silly, and you have to suspend disbelief and just accept, wow, this is happening because the characters are fucking stupid. Like, that's the narrative point. They're blinded by stupidity, and that's why what's happening right now is happening. Which just isn't very satisfying as a plot point. Like, ah, so it's because everyone's fucking dumb all of a sudden. Everyone's just a buffoon now. Got it. So that's why this final act is happening like this. So that was uh, really disappointing because they just... I don't think they stuck the landing, but I do like where the game leaves off, and I'm really excited to see them explore more in the future, because I'm pretty sure they plan this as a trilogy, so I'm really excited to see where everything picks up, but overall, there were so many great moments from the story, I can't be, like, mad about it, I do still think I walk away from this game with a very positive impression of the story, minus that very last bit towards the end of the game. 
And now just a little nitpick. Throughout my game, I put on a poncho after defeating Spawn of Ogdo, and that fucking thing would not stop glitching out. But not only that, so many times there was a ton of visual bugs and noise from, like, the characters. So, like, I'll be fighting two enemies, and all of a sudden, their cloaks will just start spiraling out of control and taking up my entire screen, fucking blinding me. It, like, all kinds of, like, wildness. So, there, even outside of performance problems, there are just some, like, bugs that happen pretty often throughout the game but not the biggest deal in the world to me it's not something i get super upset about but just something to make note of and like the final boss fight there was moments where i was just getting teleported around and like <laughs> attacked in the in the void which was clearly not supposed to happen so there, there are just some bugs to be aware of overall though oh one other thing i want to mention the soundtrack fucking slaps absolutely fucking slaps Star Wars soundtrack always goes hard, though, but I just always like to make a special mention when it just pops off the way this game does. I just love the soundtrack. Now, plugging Jedi Survivor in the moist meter, I'm unfortunately going to have to give it a 70%, and that's mainly because of the performance problems. In fact, 70 is even kind of high. It, like, I really can't stress enough how strongly I feel about how bad the business practice is of just shipping a game out knowing it's in a bad state where a lot of players won't be able to enjoy it. That shit makes me so upset. The performance issues hinder this game greatly. Without that, I'd probably give it like an 85%, pretty much exactly what I gave Fallen Order, because I really think both games are really good. I don't think this game was a massive step forward over Jedi Fallen Order, but it was still extremely enjoyable, and I had a great time with it, and it's just, once again, a shame that it shipped the way that it did. I'm confident they are going to fix those problems going forward, so I would say definitely hold off on buying this for a while until those patches are in place. And uh, that's about it. As most of you know, we started our own comic book series called God Slap. Everyone who's read God Slap so far has unanimously agreed that it's the best comic ever produced, and God Slap is well on its way to becoming the biggest name in all of comics, overthrowing Marvel within the next five years, according to recent scientific projections that I'm pulling out of my ass. It's a passion project created by myself, Jackson, Danny, and Matt, and we brought in an industry veteran named Aubrey Sitterson to help write it with us, and we're extremely proud of what we've created. Issue 1 and 2 are already out, and Issue 3 came out today, as of right now. Issue 3 is available at godslapbook.com, and per usual, this is the standard cover, but we also have two limited edition variants, which will only exist until they're sold out, and they'll never be reprinted. So they're available at godslapbook.com. 